So good evening. We'd like to welcome everybody here to our Sunday evening services at Bobby Branch. We'd also like to welcome those who are watching online tonight. Thank you for that. We'd like to remind everybody of uh, Sunday morning worship service at 9 a.m. and following at 10 a.m. Bible study, and also on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. and uh, also uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Uh, the bulletin updates. If there are any updates that need to be made to the church bulletin, please call the church office by Monday afternoons so they can get that in. Um, also, the uh, updates for the, the lock and unlock the list uh, for the men that's out there on the bulletin board, so please check that and mark that appropriately. Please either silence or turn off your electric devices. Visitation Team 4 will meet this evening after services in room number one. Uh, the youth needs to check the uh, activity list out, out, out in the foyer for all the January youth activities that are out there in the bulletin too. Uh, there will be a youth parent meeting, very important. There will be a youth parent meeting for anyone wanting to be involved with the youth on Sunday, January 8th, following our evening services. This will be a brainstorming and informational meeting. All parents of the youth are encouraged to attend and anybody that has any interest in working with the youth also. Our sick at home, Bobby and Mary Ashford, David Shilton, Tommy Crouch, Danny Gray, Jessica Adams' father. I'm sorry, our first song tonight will be 291. Three hundred and sixty nine.
Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. Father, we come to you tonight to praise you through song and through our study and worship with that we recognize you as our creator and that you have given us all many blessings that we have to enjoy. Father, we pray these things through your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you forgive us of our sins for, for we fall short. We thank you for the blessings of health. We thank you that you've allowed us to be able to be out and worship you today. And we pray for those that who are unable to be here, for those that much desire to be here, but their health will not allow it. We pray that you be with them and be with the ones that watch over them. And if it's being your will to allow them to be back with us once again. Father, we want to pray for the church uh, wherever it meets. We pray that your hand of protection to be to watch over us, that we may worship without fear harm. <clears throat> we pray for the leaders of our country, pray for them to have wisdom to do things that will that bring about peace. We also pray your blessings be on our elders as they watch and guide over our church here. Father, as we, as we continue in this worship, we ask that you help us to clear our minds and help us focus that we may not Think about worldly things, but that we may truly worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray all these things through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In just a few minutes, when the invitation is extended to us, we'll sing number 588, Jesus sinners Jesus will receive. <clears throat> so now we're going to sing number 595. Stand up.
scripture reading tonight comes from James, the fifth chapter, verses 19 and 20. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns his back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Good evening. It is good to see everyone that's out here this evening here in the building. Um, those watching Facebook, thank you for taking the time. I'd like to thank the elders for giving me the opportunity to speak. The lesson this evening is one that's a little different. It's not going to be a textual run down the line kind of thing. It's one that's going to be more to think about as far as I'm going to use more like an object lesson, I guess. Last week, me and my kids, we were watching, uh, Steve Hillis had a lesson, and it was about the movie Elf. And my kids walked up and said, Daddy, you should do one like that. So I thought about it a little bit, and the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, I might could do something like that. So tonight's lesson is going to be about what the works of this man right here done. And I know if you look at him, I, my first thought was, that looks like Mr. Rogers, but it's not. You may know him more as this looking man. If you're still confused, that will be the one that will help you out the most. The lesson this evening is going to be over the Grinch. And I know it's not a typical lesson unless you think, I just don't see how that's going to work. The Grinch has a lot of similarities with Satan, with sin, and sinners. And that's what we're going to talk about this evening. Theodore Seuss Geisel, he was born in March 2nd, 1904, but he died September 24th of 1991. He was 87 years old. He wrote a little over 60 books, writing, illustrating, and I don't know many kids that haven't read of some kind of Dr. Seuss book. He's got an impact on every one of our lives. The Grinch itself, the, the, where it started from was a 33-line poem that he wrote in um, 1955. It was called The Who Bub and the Grinch was the original title. It was put in Red Book Magazine. And in uh, October 12th, 1957, it was published into a book itself. Um, when asked about who the Grinch was, Theodore Geisel said, it's myself. It's, that's me. I'm the Grinch. Originally, the Grinch was black, and white drawing, pinkish red eyes. But of course, the Grinch that we've known from the 1966 cartoon, he's always been green to us. And when I think about green, I think about how envy and all of that portrays in him. And when you think about his life, he was just full of envy. He was full of all these things. So we're going to break down the Grinch and we're going to break it down and, and think about how it relates to in our life. It starts out, the who's, they're just going on their everyday thing. And by the way, I'm not throwing any spoilers out here. This movie was done in 2000. So hopefully you saw this movie at some point in your life. Um, but the who's, they're going along their everyday life. It's four days till Christmas. Everything is all excited. We've got to get this. We've got to do this. We've got to do And they're just living their everyday life. You know, they, they can't stand for any interruptions. That's how we are in life. We get hung up in our lives. We got this thing to do. We got this chore to do. We got to go to here. We got to get the kids to this practice. And that's how we get hung up in life as well. Mark 10 talks about a guy. It says, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. He had a great life. 
Everything was going great. It was just perfect for him. But then there become a little struggle of an interruption, and he, they, he, this is something he couldn't handle. Then we look at Matthew 6, verse 31 through 34. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We get so hung up that sometimes we forget about where blessings truly come from. God takes care of us. We think it's all on us. If I don't get this done or get that done, it's all because of me. It's all my fault. We can do nothing without God. We get hung up in life sometimes, and we, we just don't like the interruptions. And that's what he comes to do. The Grinch comes to town, and he, he destroys a bicycle. He, he does all this little chaos. And all this chaos is just for him. It's for his enjoyment. And when we think about that, you know, every bit being his, that's sort of how Satan is. Everything that he can do to interrupt our lives, everything that he can do to stop us from being what we need to be with God, it tickles him to death. He is so excited. He's happy. When you think about Luke chapter 4 and we think about Jesus and him being tempted, we know he has just gotten baptized 40 days in the wilderness. He's coming out, and Satan meets him. He says, take these stones and turn them into bread because I know you're hungry. Jesus doesn't. Come get on the pinnacle of the temple here and jump off because God's not going to let nothing happen to you. He never gave in. Then he takes him to the mountain, and he says, just bow down and worship me. I'll give you everything. He never does. But in chapter 13, it says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. He knew he couldn't get him at that moment. He knew there was going to have to be some other time where I can get you. When we look at 1 Peter 5 and 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's ready to pounce on us. He's ready to attack us. James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, when you think about that 1 Peter 5 and 8, when you think about a lion, you think about a jackal, you think about a coyote, wolves, anything, when they attack a herd, they don't attack the strongest, they don't attack the fastest, they attack the weakest. They attack the one that they know they can overcome super easy. And when they go in to attack, whenever the herd surrounds that one and they keep, the, they keep that uh, predator from getting, they have to back off for a little bit. Let me focus on this. Let me let you get to a different point where maybe I can get a better advantage of you. And that's exactly what the devil does. He comes at us whenever he thinks, I can maybe get them at a better time a little bit later. It's the hubilation, 1,000 years for the Grinch, for, for the, the Who's. And they need a holiday cheermeister. And it's quoted, but the book does say the cheermeister is the one who deserves a backslap or a toast, and it goes to a soul at Christmas who needs it the most. Little Cindy Lou Who nominates him. And the, and the, the people around him just love it because she convinces them, look, there's somebody that's struggling and they need a little encouragement. They need something to give them a boost. You know, sometimes that's all it takes for us. For the good. But worst times for the worst. Sometimes. Sometimes for the worst. Peer pressure. Our youth go across it. We as adults go across it. Because did you hear about the latest Netflix thing? You need to watch it because it's, it's just got great, great reviews. And then you start watching it and you're like, how in the world is people watching this? But it's such a great thing. Everybody's talking about it. Do you give in to it where you can talk about it to everybody? 
Or do you say, no, I'm just not going to watch that? When we think about, there's people who says, look, let me show you the right way to do what you're doing. May not be the correct way, but let me show you, this is the way you need to do it. And it just takes a little convincing. If you don't believe me, that's true. How come we have so many denominations in the world today? Because they have the Bible and the Bible says, this is what you're supposed to do. But wait a minute, let me tweak this just a little bit and it's going to be better for you. It's going to be something that you're going to enjoy more. And so another denomination springs up and you start another one and you start another one. And when you think about how all these denominations, they keep springing up. You know, we talked about this morning, Brother Ray brought it up and then Alan too, about how every, there's so many denominations today. We have church plays and we have the nativity scenes. We have this because we've got to celebrate Christ's birth. But as he, Alan stated, the Bible doesn't say a word about that. We celebrate his birth because if he did not be born, we couldn't have the forgiveness of sins because he died on the cross for us. It's not a specific day. But these denominations, they said, look, this is what you got to do. In order to be righteous with God, you need to do these things. You need to celebrate these things. No, we're Christians. We celebrate it every day. It's part of our, our life. 1 Thessalonians 5.22, again, abstain from all appearance of evil. Proverbs 1.10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thee not. Proverbs 13.20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. I got to stop on this one. I got on the MTNA board one time, and um, I was working at getting the uh, show ready, the trade show ready. And I'll never forget Willie Newby. I hadn't been around Willie Newby that much. But Willie Newby quoted this quote, and it's, this is stuck in my head to this day because he quoted this. And when you think about it, it is so true. We choose sometimes to pick the, hitch our horse to the wrong, or hitch our trailer to the wrong horse. It takes us the wrong way. We get hung up with the fools. They take us the wrong way we should. Galatians 1.10, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Pressure gets us all down. It, it eats at us. It works on us. Because we don't want to be the, the oddball. We don't want to be the one left out. We want to be included. And it can wear us down. Well, the Grinch decides to come to the holiday jubilation, and he is the cheermaster. He is the great. They, they praise him. Look at how good he is. He has to judge all these contests. He has a sack race that he's pushing little kids over so he can be the winner, and they praise him. Oh, look how good he is. That happens with us sometimes, but something bad happens to him. It's a memory of when he was a kid. And it brings back all this anger. And it brings back all this resentment that he has. So his thing is revenge. I've got to do something to get back at these people. See, we sometimes in our lives, we have a feeling of everything is going perfect. Everything is great. But then... We have some things that come up. Maybe, big, maybe it's big. Maybe it's a death. Maybe it's the death of a child, a parent, a grandparent, a loved one. Maybe it's a job. Your job is being now. We're going to cut your job out, and we're not going to need you, or we're going to demote you. Or maybe it's a fire, and it destroys your house. It destroys everything. That's, that's some pretty big news for some families. Maybe it's just something little. Maybe it's you got car trouble and it just gets on you. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's bills. You know what the way money is today? It seems like everything costs more and more and more and it, it, it eats us and eats us. Where do we put ourselves as far as our focus? We have a lifestyle that we have. We want to live it. But what do we do? Satan comes in. He eats at us. He gets us. He tries to interrupt us. We think we got it all figured out. Matthew 28, 19, and 
through 20 says, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And this is the clincher. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. We've always got God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's a big problem with the world today, isn't it? We want to be wise in our eyes. We want to think we've got all the answers. We've got all the solutions. We're the ones who can figure it out. Things going good. God's on the back burner. That's not a focus right now. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good cheer. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth good, doeth good with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And in Joshua 1, 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. God's always with us. Satan always isn't with us. Like I said, he departs for seasons. When we're strong and we're faithful, he's not going to be attacking us because we've got our focus right. We've got our priorities right. He likes to come in and disrupt our lives to see what he can do to bring us on his level. When we think about 1 John 2, 15 and 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You know that those three things, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life, is such a big problem today, even with Christians. Because we have a status we need. We have to be a certain way in the world. We don't want to be someone who's hidden. We don't want to be someone who's just doing the jobs unseen. People today, I heard a preacher say one time when he was talking about the sermon of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, and Jesus gets a towel and starts washing their feet, and he said the people today need a title, and they really need to be getting a towel instead. They need to be doing some works. They need to be not focusing on how, how important I am, but focusing on what can I do to better? What can I do to better the church? What can I do to better my family? What can I do to better my friends? And this lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes of pride of life, it gets into us. It becomes part of our normal everyday things if we're not careful. Well, the who's wake up after the Grinch has stolen all their presents, taken all their things, the who's wake up, and they realize that every one of them is still okay. Everything's gone, but we're still okay. They gather around, they start singing, everything is good. It's a new day. You know, every one of us wake up of a morning and we have a choice. How do we want to make the day? Do we want to be just as good as we were yesterday? That's pretty good yesterday, so I'm, I'll be all right. Or do we strive to be a better person than we were yesterday? Or do we even think about it? You know, when you think back about the Mark 4 of Jesus being tempted, you know, every day when he was out there and he was going through that fasting for 40 days, you know, he, he all, imagine what he was thinking. And then these great, wonderful things presented to him. There's bread. That would be wonderful. There's all this power. There's all these lands. Look at what all I can have. The temptations he didn't give in. We quote this verse right here a lot of times for when we talk about becoming a Christian and the steps to salvation. And it ends up there in the second part. And ye shall have tribulation tended. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. But when we look a little bit earlier in that, the church, this is written to the church at Smyrna. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. 
Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. How many of us could say we'd be strong for the Lord if we knew we were going to jail? How many of us could be strong if we knew that our life could end if we said, I believe in you, God. I believe in you, Christ. How many of us would be happy when things are just horrible and say, this is awesome. This is great. Matthew 10, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Romans 12, 12, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. In 1 Corinthians 13, 7, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Remaining faithful is the hardest part of being a Christian. It's easy to say, God, I believe that your son Jesus came here upon this earth. He died for us. It's through his blood that I can have my sins erased. That's the easiest part of becoming a Christian. It's that remaining faithful. That's the hard part. Because it's ever going, ever changing, every day. It's a new, it's a, it's a new adventure every day. Because none of us do the same thing every day. The Grinch hears the singing. He hears the joy that, that is going on down below. And he can't figure it out. I've taken everything from them. I've taken their trees. I've taken their presents. I've taken all the things they have. And it says he realizes there must be something more. And I'm quoting here. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And then the true meaning of Christmas came through and the Grinch found the strength of ten Grinches plus two. Sometimes a little compassion, sometimes a little caring can completely change someone's life. Seeing that, hey, look, this isn't just someone who's worried about what they have. They're worried about each other. They're worried about how each, each one is. It can change someone's life around. I spoke to a woman not too long ago, and she, she was telling me about her husband who has passed away. And she said, you know what, Brandon? She said, he wasn't a Christian when I married him. She said, but he went to church with me. She said, he was 60 years old before he ever obeyed the gospel. She said, you know, it just took a little bit. Just little by little, you can work. And something can happen. But never giving up is the key to it. So many times in life we get to working on things, and I'm, I'm so bad about this. I get to working on something, I get angry, I get frustrated, I throw the wrenches down and I walk away from it. I'm like, I, I just can't handle it. I'll come back to it later. But sometimes just staying there and sticking with the problem, it might have been right in front of my face the whole time, but I was just refusing to see it. 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Acts 20, 35, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Support the weak. Support the weak in physical things. Help, help out your friends. Help out those that need help. As a church, we're always looking for a work to, to, to show how the Christians are, whether it's raking leaves or maybe giving a donation for, some, for a, an organization or something that, that's needed. As the church, what can we do to help the weak? But also, how do we help the weak that are weak spiritually? Are we here for them to listen to them? Are we here to give them support and say, I've got your back? I support you, and I know, I know I, I've been in your shoes. Or maybe it's I've never been in your shoes, but I know somebody who is. So let me, let me get you in touch with somebody, and maybe he can help you with your problem to support the weak. Because, as I said, a little compassion and a little caring can make a big difference. 
The Grinch ends up and he, after his heart grows, he realizes a mistake. He comes back bringing all the presents. He jumps down and he says, I did it. I stole all the presents. Take me away. I'm good to go. And the policeman looks at him and he goes, yeah, he admitted it. But he goes, everything's here, so we're all right. And they take him in. He got a fresh start. See, the Grinch sometimes, when he realized his mistake, he came forth and said, I did it. How many of us are openly admit our mistakes? Sometimes we don't want, well, now listen, that really wasn't my fault that this happened. It was, no, you still made the mistake. It's your fault. You did it. How many of us make a mis- want to admit, I said this thing and I shouldn't have, or I did this and I shouldn't have. I lost my temper here. I did this, I did that. And we never want to admit, well, I did it because of this. That's a problem that we have. But just as the who's, when he said, I did it, I'm sorry, they took him in. That's what we do as Christians. You think about when someone says, I want to become a Christian, and they come forward here and we want to baptize them, they get baptized. What happens as soon as we say amen after our last prayer? There is lined up people everywhere to hug them and say, I'm here for you, I encourage you, I support you. Or someone who says, look, I've done these bad things in my life and I need to correct it. There's always a line to say, I support you. There's texts, there are messages, whatever, to say, I'm here for you. If you ever need me, I'm here for you. Colossians 3, 16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, teaching and admonishing one another. You know, we sometimes, we lose that part in that because we're worried about the singing aspect as being in the church. That's the verse that we always bring to about singing and making melody in our hearts and and, and going with it. But if we don't admonish one another, we're not doing a whole lot of good. Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sins. An evil heart of unbelief, but exhort daily. I know I don't do this, but how many of us check on our brothers and sisters in Christ daily. How are you doing? How's everything going? We don't. But the Bible tells us, exhort one another daily. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even even as also ye do. Romans 12.10, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. In closing this tonight, we're going to go with James 5. This was our reading that Brother Ken read a while ago. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. That old Grinch, he had a heart. About like Pharaoh's, it was hardened. He just refused to see the good. He refused to see the bad. I mean, he only wanted to see the bad. There's many in the world that are just like that today. There's one guy I could call right now, and if I called him and talked to him, by the time I get off, he's going to depress me so much because he's going to tell me how much bad stuff is going on. But he's blessed like you wouldn't believe, but he only sees the bad thing, bad part of things. But as Christians, what do we do to see the good? Are we seeing the good in others? I know this Christmas season that we have is is joy and it's look for the good and, and give and give. But Christmas, sort of like the Grinch, has become a lot of monetary and commercialism. How many of us are giving our time to our fellow Christians? Or giving our ear to just say, hey, I'm here if you ever need me. If you ever need some strength, if you ever want to talk, I'm here. Because 
Just like that little Cindy Lou Who, it just took somebody little to make this person's life a little better. And he was happy. He was taken in. But like Christians, sometimes they fall away. And it takes something else to strengthen them to come back into the fold. So if you're here this evening and you've never become a member of the church, do it tonight. Why wait? Or if you've been like the Grinch and you've been taken in and you've wandered away, and why not come back? Because just like these who's, there's going to be a lot of loving arms. There's going to be a lot of encouraging when you say, I did wrong. I'm admitting it. I need to be fixed. Or if you're just saying, I'm struggling. I need some help. I need some encouragement. I need the prayers of the church to just help me because I'm having a hard time right now. Again, you're going to get those loving arms. So if there's anyone here this evening that any of this criteria fits, please, I'm asking you to come right now as we stand and as we sing. If you have not had the opportunity today to partake of the Lord's Supper and to give of your means, if you want to do that, if you'll make your way through the door at the back, the first door on the left that has been left prepared for you to uh, take advantage of that. <clears throat> Visitors, if you're with us this evening, we thank you so much for being with us. We hope you'll want to come back and be with us at another time. Our next worship service will be Wednesday and our midweek Bible study will begin at 7 o'clock. Uh, the visitation team number four will meet tonight shortly to pass out the cards. And then uh, if you have not signed up for the lock unlock list back there, please do so. Please look at that and put your name on it so we'll, we'll have all the months covered uh, for next year to lock or unlock the building, whichever you prefer. Now we're going to sing this final hymn and we'll be dismissed with a song. 
thank thee again for the opportunity that we've had to be here today and to worship and sing these songs and learn from your word. We thank you for the ability of the men today that have given the lessons. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless them. Help us always to know, Heavenly Father, that all we have comes from thee and what we are. Heavenly Father, we pray now that as we go through this week that we can let our light shine and that we can have the, if we have the opportunity that we can help others and help them to see Christ in us. Go with each, each now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.